Okay, lungs, can we just, just for five minutes, can we behave? Hello. It's a readathon, a rant readathon. It is Sunday, the 17th of January, which means it is time for the rent readathon. Yay! And for me to read Harriet Porber and the bad boy dinosaur word. I'm still going with dinosaur word. I have watched other people pronounce it. I've tried to break it down phonetically. Apparently my dyslexia just doesn't want to cooperate, so bad boy, dinosaur, person. I've broken it down into sections, I've put tabs in. So I'm going to be reading 21 pages a day. So, um, day one, let's see how this goes. Okay, it's genius, it's clever. I don't know if my brain is awake enough for this. It's talking to the reader. Oh, damn. So Harriet has left New York, gone to a little island off the coast of England to work on some spells. Spells are written the same way kind of books are written. Harriet hasn't released a spell in a very, very long time, so her publishers are kind of going to drop her. And she meets this bad boy um, dinosaur who's in a cabin kind of next to hers who is uh, in a band called Seven Inch Nails. <laughs> And he's, he's basically, he's being evil and he goes, well, what, well, I'm written like this. Don't worry, later on I'll switch and you'll realise that I'm actually really, really nice. Because if I was a somebody like this, you shouldn't be dating me. And she goes, why are you telling me this? Because I'm not telling you this, I'm telling the reader this. I'm just like, oh God. Uh-oh. Genius! But my brain just wanted a silly story. <laughs> thingamajig does anybody actually know what day it is anymore moving on day three of harriet porber and the dinosaur bloke moral of the story or main thing of the story is that the dinosaur snabe is self-aware he's completely aware that he's in a book i get this now he knows he's in a romance book he knows that he's a bad boy that will turn into a good guy in the end so he keeps showing like bits of like conversation going oh you know I'm not going to turn out like this I'll end up being nice I have to have a nice moral underground otherwise I would be a horrible character my overlord is Chuck Tingle it's sort of reminding me of Supernatural when Gods is revealed as being wait oh how am I that dumb Gods Chuck Okay, Supernatural fans, TV series, there is a guy who is writing fan fiction of Supernatural that turns out to be the real thing and is, he's God and his name's Chuck. <laughs> is Chuck Tingle by any chance a Supernatural fan and written himself in the book? Oh, how am I that thick? How did I not see that? That better be true. Yay. Thingy. I know it's a Thursday. That's an improvement. Okay. I swear I do actually move. I just always end up on the same spot on the sofa. I think I'm having trouble, like, reviewing this or describing this because it's a lot of things at once. It's turned erotic. They've had a couple of sex scenes between Harriet Porber and Snabe, who is, uh, you know, the bad boy dinosaur guy. Both Snabe and Harriet are trans. Um, so there's very there's a very big conversation 
around um, different body parts being different things. Like, that is not my penis, that is my clitoris. That is not my butt, that's my vagina. Um, for Harrier and then for Snape, it's um, he has a piece, um, a dildo, that's the wrong word, but I have forgotten the word already, but he has that and he uses that. I like the fact that Chuck has gone into so much detail with the sex scenes of her, the anatomy of how two trans people have sex. Talk about different kinds of sex and how you have sex when you are trans, I think it's important, like, this education, where are you going to get it from? And okay, this is just a book, this is not going to be real life, but it's also at least trying to educate while being entertaining. Plus the whole tension that these two have got going is really good. I mean, they basically bang against a tree, which just kind of... Visually, I had Bridgerton stuck in my head. <laughs> Not quite. I cut the two don't really mesh, and yet there was a tree involved. So I mean, this dinosaur has got some serious upper body strength. He lifts Harriet so that she's kind of groin to face up a tree. The logistics of that, I was just like, yeah, this this definitely has to be a dinosaur because no, I'm sure there's some porn out there that that somebody can do that, but that that just sounds like a way to dislocate a shoulder. But um, yeah, it's 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 um, it's fully entertaining. It is Friday, the twenty second, and I get to leave the sorting house. To be fair, it's just to go to hospital and have an MRI scan. But I get to leave the house, and I get to see other human beings. Apparently, they exist, and they're not just a figment of my imagination or people on my phone. I cannot tell you how exciting this is as a shielder to actually be able to leave the house even though I'm going into a COVID environment. Hospitals are very scary, especially the one I'm going to because I have past history with it and mentally I have a problem going in there. But I'm going today because I get to leave the house. I might have gone a bit stir crazy and I miss humans. Also, it helps that my bestie is, is the one taking me, so I can't hug them, I can't get close to them, I can't touch them, but I can sit in the same car as them, and I can talk to them, and I can laugh with them, and then they get the fun of pushing me around a hospital in a wheelchair. But things are happening that are not just the same as yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that, and the day before that. Monotony is being broken. I'm a little overexcited, actually. I think I may have finally lost the plot. But okay. So reading might not happen today because life. Uh, I'll catch up another time. But yes, I'm excited. horizontal land i can't set up the world spins it is saturday the 23rd the last day of the readathon the day after i left the house ow on so many levels ow it was the last day of reading trans wizard harriet porba and the bad boy green dinosaur bloke over here let's let's take a track at this Parasophilus? Did I actually just get that right? Is it a Parasophilus? I'm about 50 pages from the end and we've just met this woolly mammoth named... Ooh, what was his name? Hang on, it's a pun. Bumbleborn. <laughs> his name is Bumbleborn. And while being introduced, I have to read this, it's so good. I'm gay, Bumbleborn says. Uh, what? I stammer, a little confused. That's cool. I just wanted to say that clearly in this story. Instead of claiming years later, it was there in subtext the whole time. The woolly mammoth continues. The book wins all the awards just for that section. 
Just like on so many levels, I love this book. It is aware of itself to a ridiculous extent. It's like a parody of a parody of a parody of self-awareness and excellentness. That's not a word, but I'm going to thoroughly enjoy my last 50 pages because moving seems like a thing I shouldn't be doing. I reached the end. And the last line was, I feel safe to be me. That was kind of cute. That there's a lot in this book. I highly recommend it. So many things are happening in this book on so many different levels. The basic story is Harriet meets the dinosaur Snape and they have a tumultuous relationship. Is that a way of putting it? They have an on-off relationship and that it grows and that then she's her life is threatened and they have to deal with that. And, and, and then it's a happy ever after book because that's what most books are like. That's probably a spoiler. But, yeah. But there's so much else going on underneath that on the surface this is just a very, you know, ah, oh, silly erotica f book. But there's more going on. Better Minds Than Me have uh, reviewed it. I think I'm going to leave Kathy's review down below because she goes into the detail that I would like to go into and yet don't have the right sentence structure to uh to, to do it so i'll link her review down below but i i highly recommend it you'll laugh you'll giggle your take on some information and and think about it yes and that was the rent readathon the love of the different kind of trans representation i still don't know what anti-capitalism is but let's just say it's in there <laughs> who knows I've also been reading Howl's Moving Castle at the same time. Is that anti-capitalism? Possibly. I don't know. Okay. That was the Rent Leader Thon. Thank you very much to Kathy and Bex for doing this. I, I, I've enjoyed myself this week. What did you read for the Rent Reader Thon? Hit me up down below in the comments. If you don't know what to say, but you just want me to know that you were here, leave a rainbow. Let's go with the rainbows. And um, I will see you guys for the next video. I've just realised there's a lobster next to my head. I'm not really sure why.